Good evening and welcome to the 26th Annual Diversity in Law Banquet. My name is Leah Terranova and I serve as the Assistant Dean for Academic and Student Affairs and the Director of Diversity. I'm delighted to know that so many folks are joining us tonight for this important event celebrating and supporting our diverse students. Before you begin, I'd like to offer a formal land acknowledgement that the School of Law and University of Kansas reside on the ancestral territory of several tribal nations, including the Ka Osage and Shawnee peoples. Specifically, the university occupies land taken from these nations. We recognize that Native Americans are traditional guardians of the land and that there is an enduring relationship between Native peoples and these traditional territories. Our school recognizes advocates and supports the sovereignty of the four federally recognized tribes of Kansas, the Prairie Band Potawatomi Nation, the Kickapoo Tribe in Kansas, the Sac and Fox Nation of Missouri in Kansas and Nebraska, and the Iowa Tribe in Kansas. Now, I know this is likely not your first Zoom of the day, so we're gonna try and make this fun and entertaining for you. We've got a comedian, we've got Mayor Lucas, and we're gonna finish the night out with mini class reunions. And we'll be also encouraging you throughout the event to give what you're able. Because the event is virtual this year and we're not buying you all a fancy dinner, that means all proceeds collected will go towards funding scholarships for diverse students. This is a chance to make a real impact on the experience and opportunities of future Jayhawk lawyers. First, I'd like to welcome our host for the evening, Dean Stephen Mazza to offer some wel words of welcome and highlight the importance of why we're all here tonight. Thank you. And now, Dean Mazza. Good evening. I'm Stephen Mazza, Dean of the KU Law School. Welcome to the 26th Annual Diversity in Law Banquet. This year, the School of Law is hosting a virtual event to celebrate diversity in the legal profession. In a normal year, we would be gathering for this event in a ballroom at the Orient Hotel, enjoying a meal together while we honor the many contributions our diverse students and graduates make to the bench, the bar, and the greater community. While the ongoing pandemic prevented us from hosting an in-person banquet, the law school remains committed to celebrating the success and belonging of our diverse students. The proceeds from this year's event go directly to the Diversity in Law Scholarship Fund. Thanks to the generosity of our event sponsors and our donors, tonight's proceeds are the highest in the 26 year history of this event. We invite you to contribute to the Diversity Scholarship Fund during tonight's celebration. To do that, you can visit launchku.org and make a gift to the Diversity in Law Scholarship. That page will stay open for donations through tonight's event and into next week. Joining us in the virtual audience are members of the three organizations within the law school that advise the administration on diversity, equity, and inclusion matters. First, I'd like to recognize our faculty and staff committee on diversity and inclusion, chaired by Professor Corey Rayburn Young. Thank you to our committee members for their continued work, Dean Leah Terranova, Professors Jean Phillips, Betsy Six, Kyle Velty, Sean Watts, and Lua Yule, and staff members Stacy Blakeman, Yolanda Huggins, Margaret Hare, and Brianna Hanshew. For several years now, the law school has organized a Dean's Diversity Leadership Council made up of current KU Law students who are interested in helping the law school improve our diversity and inclusion programs. This year, the group has led efforts to provide a gender neutral restroom in Green Hall and advise the administration on new initiatives. Thank you to our DDLC members, Joanna Alvarez, Zachary Beach, Sarah Buchanan, Cortez Downey, Aiden Grable, Rebecca Henderson, Delaney Hagert, Jared Jevons, Minha Jut, Audrey Nelson, Bria Nelson, Abraham Fennensteel, and Donica Short. Thank you also to Dean Leah Terranova, who serves as the advisor to the DDLC. I also want to recognize the members of the Alumni Diversity Advisory Council. Myra Aguirre, Cynthia Bryant, Laura Clark Fay, Amy Fowler, Rico Colster, Pat Kanapka, Jehan Moore, Demetrius Peterson, Melissa Plunkett, Drew Sampson, Kelly Sears, Henry Thomas, Jabari Womble, Isako Yamashi, Elise Zadalis, 
Holly Zane, and Gabe Zoragastua. These alumni provide counsel and advice and help mentor student leadership on diversity issues. All of these activities operate under the auspices of the law school's Director of Diversity, who is our liaison with the University Office of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging. Thank you to our Director of Diversity, Dean Leah Terranova. Before I tell you more about the program for our virtual banquet, I want to take a moment to share updates about our diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives at KU Law. All students participated in professional identity and cultural competency training at the start of the fall semester, led by a guest facilitator. Faculty and staff also took part in a training session as part of our annual faculty retreat. Moving forward, we will continue offering programs to engage our students in the difficult and essential discussions that will give them the cultural competency skills needed to enter law practice. While COVID precautions have prevented us from hosting in-person events this year, the law school has hosted virtual discussions on topics such as racial injustice and police reform, voting rights, and the rights of protesters. In the fall of 2019, two KU Law alumni, Bill Sampson and Drew Sampson, generously agreed to fund an initiative at the law school focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion. In January 2020, the law school introduced the Drew Mort Sampson Center for Diversity and Inclusion. Tonight, I would like to introduce the members of the center's first board of advisors. Cheryl Willard, partner and former managing partner at the Seattle Washington Law Firm of Williams, Kastner & Gibbs. Jeff Johnson, the Lorna and Russ Talbert Endowed President and Chief Executive Officer at the Iowa State Alumni Association, and John Bullock, a KU Law graduate and partner at the Lawrence, Kansas law firm of Stevens & Brandt. They will be joined on the advisory board by the founder, Drew Sampson, law professor, Lua Yule, and assistant dean, Leah Terranova. In terms of diversity and inclusion, KU Law has a long tradition to live up to. Back in 1887, just nine years after the law department was created, the law school graduated its first African-American student, Isaac Franklin Bradley. In 1891, we graduated our first female lawyer, Ella Brown, and in 1900, our first Native American lawyer, James Vandal. This year's entering class was the most diverse in the law school's history, with 28% of the class of 2023 self-identifying as students of color. Our Office of Admissions continues its effort to recruit diverse students to KU Law through outreach to undergraduate students and through virtual events and admissions fairs. We know there is still much more work to do. Students, faculty, staff, and alumni committees continue to advance efforts to recruit more diverse students, facilitate conversations, promote belonging, and engage the greater university and Lawrence communities. As I look at the RSVP list for tonight's event, I was gratified to see so many folks from our alumni, student, faculty, and staff, and university communities who want to celebrate the importance of diversity in the law school and the legal profession, and to support diversity scholarships at KU Law. In addition to our sponsors and donors who have made contributions to the Diversity in Law Scholarship, several alumni have established new funds in the past year to provide expanded opportunities for diverse students. Those opportunities include the Nathaniel and Floyd e. Crawford Memorial Law Scholarship, established by 1976 KU Law graduate Nathaniel Davis, as well as the Isaac Franklin Bradley Memorial Law Scholarship and the Hovey Williams Award for Diversity and Inclusion in Intellectual Property. Thank you for your contributions. Returning to tonight's event, let me tell you a bit about our program. In light of the stresses of the past year, we wanted to make sure this evening would be fun. So our event tonight features a comedy performance by a retired law professor, Liz Glazer. Later in the program, you will hear stories from some of our graduates who have received support from the Law School's Diversity Scholarship Fund. We will celebrate our student affinity groups and their many contributions to the law school and we'll be joined by Kansas City Mayor and KU Law Lecturer, Quentin Lucas. Before we get started, please join me in thanking our sponsors who gave generously to the Diversity in Law Scholarship as part of this event. First, I'd like to thank our gold sponsors, 
Brian Cave, Leighton Paisner, Hush Blackwell, Leverage Law Group, and Stevie Siegel and Hansen. In a moment, you will hear from our title sponsor, NIC Inc. NIC was started by a group of KU Law graduates. Its current CEO is Harry Harrington, who received his law degree from KU in 1993. NIC is a publicly traded company that works with literally thousands of federal, state, and local government agencies to develop online services. This is the company's third year as title sponsor for the Diversity Banquet. We are very grateful for their continued support for diversity scholarships. We will recognize more of our sponsors later in the program. Thank you for joining us for the 26th Annual Diversity in Law Banquet. And now I will turn it over to Harry Harrington, CEO of NIC Inc., our title sponsor. Good evening, and thank you for attending the 26th Annual Diversity in Law Fundraiser. My name is Harry Harrington, and I'm honored to speak to you tonight not only as the Chief Executive Officer and Chairman of the Board for NIC, but also as a graduate of the KU School of Law. NIC is proud to continue our role as presenting sponsor of this important event, which promotes diversity at KU Law and raises critical funds for the Diversity Scholarship Program. I am a firm believer that the legal profession has a responsibility to make a difference when it comes to supporting diversity and inclusion within our profession and our communities. Over the past year, we have heard a lot of rhetoric on the need for change, but little real action. Face it, nothing will change unless we change it. As current and future leaders in our communities, you have a unique ability to make a difference. I challenge all of you to make that difference. We need to do more than just talk about the importance of diversity. We need to lead by example, both personally and professionally. Be the voice and the leader that helps to affect real change in our communities and our country. By attending tonight's event, you've already made the decision to support diversity and inclusion at KU Law and to give support to the next generation of KU Law students. I would like to personally thank you for showing your support and for the difference you're making through your donations. The money raised tonight will make a difference by providing scholarships to students who have worked hard and deserve to join us in the legal profession. Without our support, many of these students would not have that opportunity. Together, we can give them that chance. Thank you again for attending and truly supporting the University of Kansas School of Law. Thank you. Thank you. Our five student affinity organizations not only create and foster a microculture of belonging for diverse students, within Green Hall, they work to inform the law school about the changes we must address to become a better institution. Our diverse student leaders have initiated countless projects that seek to make Green Hall a more inclusive place and benefit the broader community beyond our walls. This has been an extraordinarily hard year for our students to find community within the isolation of a pandemic. That is certainly no more true than for our students from marginalized populations. What I have seen is that students from across these organizations who share different identities and experiences frequently collaborate on projects focused on equity and inclusion. They have modeled the power and strength of coming together for a common cause. Diverse student-led projects include the creation of the Gender Marker Name Change Clinic, which has served hundreds of trans people living in Kansas and offered student leaders the opportunity to educate attorneys across the state on trans advocacy. Our affinity groups have led blood drives and orchestrated unbelievable fundraising for local food banks and shelters for people in our community experiencing homelessness. Diverse students have educated us towards the inclusive practice of using pronouns. These students hold leadership positions on national affinity boards and spend their time and energy recruiting and mentoring pre-law students who might not otherwise see law school as a possibility. As I speak, the doors to our new bathroom are being stained. That too was an initiative led by our students. Diversity, equity, and inclusion work is not stacked ever evolving, and we are students, all of us. I am learning that to do DEI work in our institutions is to listen to and make space for voices which have been structurally silenced. 
I am grateful for the patience, for the generosity and the partnership of so many students who do this hard work and from whom I have learned so much. The work, my work is far from over, but we're becoming more aware and committing ourselves to the right course. Thank you for supporting this work and these students. I'm honored to have the opportunity to acknowledge and celebrate all of our affinity organizations and the students who make these organizations what they are. Let's take a closer look at who we're celebrating tonight. Next up, we've got a special guest who's here to lighten the COVID Zoom gloom and give us all something to smile about. She's a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania and the University of Chicago Law School, after which she became a tenured law professor at my very own alma mater, Hofstra University School of Law. In an effort to make her parents even prouder, she gave it all up to become a stand-up comedian and recently won first place in the Boston Comedy Festival. Please welcome Liz Glazer. Thank you so much. I am Liz Glazer. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Dean Terranova. Um, those are all of my degrees. And now I'm a stand-up comedian. So those degrees are props. Uh, I, I did used to be a tenured law professor and then I became a stand-up comedian. And that is, I, I'm sure you guys know this, but like that's the typical route to stand-up comedy. Generally speaking, if you want to be a stand-up comedian, you go to law school for three years, then you practice for two years, then teach for nine years, get tenure, give it all up, and do stand-up comedy, screaming into your phone in front of a ring light next to the bathroom with the cat litter. This is living the dream. Sometimes people ask me, they're like, why did you go to law school? I'm like, I'm setting up a joke I'm gonna tell in approximately 14 years, I'm a planner. So anyway, it's really wonderful to be here with you all tonight for this gala. Um, it's so exciting. Uh, I, I, I am one of you. Uh, my mother would like for me to tell you that I'm still practice, uh, licensed rather to practice, um, not in Kansas or Missouri for that matter. Um, not even in New Jersey, the state where I live and also failed the bar exam, um, but in New York. And that's my background. So anyway, but I do this now. But the thing is, it's like, I don't know sometimes if being a lawyer ever leaves you. You know what I mean? Like, first of all, I still speak like this. Uh, so there's that. And then there's also just like, quirks of personality. Like, I think about this a lot when people get canceled for tweeting, you know, about this, like people will say something years ago, then someone digs it up years later. And, you know, it's like a whole kerfuffle around whatever this person said. I'm like, 
I don't think I've ever written anything down, let alone said anything above a whisper that I didn't imagine being held up in literal court. So it's always puzzling to me. And for that matter, honestly, do you guys remember when people would freak out that the NSA was reading our text messages? You know, like, don't text. You never know who's reading. Was I the only one who was excited? I'm like, okay, do they have talent agents on staff at the NSA? Like, that's the kind of environment that I thrive in when it's just like, I'm just texting someone. Maybe I have a crush on them. You know, just no press, just like casually texting it up. And that's the moment that I just want someone to go through it and be like, you know, I'm just imagining the agents like, hey, come over here. This isn't a terrorist, but she's got some things to say. And for that matter, not just my text messages. I mean, my emails too, okay? Honestly, if you want me ever to see an email, find a way to put it in my sent mail folder because that is the only folder that I check reliably. Do you guys do this ever? Like you send an email, okay? I could just send an email and that's a day's work, honestly. Because the thing is when I send an email, I admire my work so much. It's honestly disgusting, but it's true. I just am like, I'm, I, I will send an email. And then I'm like, you know what? Before I send another email, I think I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy the fruits of my own labor by reading this email over and over and over again. Just like to admire what is the artwork of my email. And I'm just sitting there. I'm just like, I can take the afternoon off. I mean, look at this. I said terrific three times in a single paragraph email. Signed the email love. Did so confidently. I mean, I don't have anything else to do today. It's amazing. And okay, so here's another thing. Like on the topic of emails, which I imagine like people are like, what was being a lawyer like? I'm like, I think it was sitting at a desk for many hours in a row being CC'd on emails I did not understand. And I think I did that part very well, the not understanding specifically. But like, I, I do you know how people love to delete emails? And not only that they, I, I guess they love deleting them. I don't understand it, but it's kind of like, you know, they love to talk about the deletion of emails as though it's this like moral good you know, like, like I read a lot of self-help books. I'm no better version of myself than on week five of an eight week audible course that promises to transform my life forever. Okay. At any moment, I'm in the middle of one of those courses and it's great. I love it. I love the idea of improvement, the, the fact that I never will be quite there. It's all great. I'm just like trying to get enlightened one self-help Bible at a time. But in any event, there is this gamut in those books about inbox zero. Maybe you know it. This idea that like, you're not a good person unless you leave work at like five o'clock or, you know, two in the morning for lawyers, whatever it is. And if you have but one email, I mean, it's a failure, okay? I don't subscribe to this at all. I, in fact, love all of my emails, all 127,544 of my emails I love. And I don't wanna get rid of them. There I said it, okay? Because the thing is, and I, I'm not all, like I like a minimalist aesthetic. I'm into throw out your sweaters, your old undies, whatever it is, you know, because the thing is you cannot control F search your pants but you can your emails, okay? And the thing is I have some personal experience with this because when it comes time for your high school friend's second daughter to be bat mitzvahed and all of your friends are asking, does anyone know the kid's Hebrew name so we can engrave it on the silver bracelet for the group gift? Who has the 2008 announcement in an email? For the Simchat bot that says it's Nechama Malka. I do. And I love it, okay? And by the way, on the topic of deletion, there's also voicemails. And this one I do not understand, okay? How is it that my cell phone, this one device that it's got to hold like the equivalent of nine feature films and like a burst of 322 pictures of a subway seat I didn't even mean to take in 2007. And that's all fine. But if it's got like more than a minute total of voicemail tape, it's full. It couldn't possibly handle anything more. I think it's almost like the people who designed the voicemail program on the phone had this originalist interpretation. It's like, 
Nobody needs more voicemails in storage than what would have fit on a, 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 re, a reel of answering machine tape in 1987. Why? I am in favor of a dynamic interpretation for voicemail storage, okay? And this is my platform. You're supposed to donate money tonight. I would love it if you did to the cause of this gala. Um, but if I can persuade you in this moment, I'll do it again at the end, to reach into your purses, I feel the passion about the voicemail issue. So if you do too, and probably you don't. I mean, what is it like so I can have somebody from my AA meeting leave their entire seventh step on my, into, on my voicemail to fill it up again is the thing that I'm campaigning for, but nevertheless, I love it. I love my voicemails because the thing is, okay, here's the thing that happened to me. So I have a very old car. I don't mean to brag, but it's like 100 years old. It has key marks all over it. It's snot green. Everything's falling apart. It's it's like got a key that actually goes in the ignition as opposed to like what now you pay more for, which is a car where the key is just a theoretical construct, okay? My light did not like this. So now it's like, okay, fine. You want a hundred year old car? No tech for the rest of this set. That's fine, light, but here is the thing. Okay, I love my car. I love that the key goes right in the ignition. I mean, honestly, it's probably gonna die tomorrow. Every day is a blessing with this car, but okay, fine. So I had the car, I drove it to Plymouth, Massachusetts, and the car didn't start when I was in Plymouth, Massachusetts, making me have to engage in a transactional relationship with an auto body shop in Plymouth, Massachusetts, specifically Barbara Geller's auto body shop that diagnosed that my 100-year-old car would not start and needed a starter. And the reason I'm telling you this is because when I received the voicemail from Barbara Geller of Geller Auto telling me that my car wouldn't start and all of that coming from Plymouth, Massachusetts, the voicemail said, hi, Liz, it's Barbara Geller of Geller Auto. Your car won't start, it needs a starter. And do you think that every day that I do not have that voicemail still on my phone that I don't feel bereft? You got another thing coming. I miss those voicemails. Okay, so anyway, those are the, the main things that I'm campaigning for. But I am also obviously very much in favor of diversity. Okay, I'm a lesbian. I feel like at some point I did get gay enough. I could stop coming out. People were like, we're aware. Um, I have no idea how to fix a car. I mean, honestly, like people, lesbians, like, like music such as the Indigo Girls and Ani DeFranco, I was introduced to these groups, these bands or musicians, um, and they're great, and I get that, but the person who introduced them to me was my straight male friend. So that's the kind of lesbian I am. And like, I don't know, in some ways I am a typical lesbian, I guess, like I have cats, that's pretty typical lesbian. I have 200. Thousand. We all live together in a U-Haul parked right outside my ex-girlfriend's house where she lives with my other ex-girlfriend. They're together now. I park behind the Subaru unless it's being used. Then I'll just park behind the other Subaru, but I don't know if I fit into the stereotypes. No, like I I'm bad at sports. I know you guys had you know, an unfortunate Super Bowl situation. Um, I had to actually engage in an email exchange. I still have it, I don't delete, um, with Dean Terranova about this. I'm like, are people gonna be upset about the Super Bowl? Cause I wasn't a hundred percent sure who was playing, but then once I, you know, had in my email stuff about the Super Bowl, I'm like, oh, I think they might care. Um, but I, I don't know more than that. I do know that you guys are the Jayhawks. So go Jayhawks. Um, but I do know that because of signing on to your website and realizing that the name of your cloud is also called a Jayhawk. So I don't know if I'm rooting for um, a, a data saving platform, which is honestly a bit more my speed and brand as it were. Um, but in the event that I'm also rooting for a sports team, I'm happy for the coincidence because I'm so bad at sports, okay? And here's, this is a confession. As a lesbian, honestly, as a person, I get very insecure about how bad I am at sports. Like, here's an example. I was once on a basketball team. It was actually a basketball team at the law firm that I worked at. And I was so bad 
And I, I honestly, I got kicked off of the team, which was a really funny conversation with this other guy, a senior associate named Ron, who wouldn't just come out and tell me that I was kicked off. It was like this whole runaround about how we're trying to make the league more competitive. And anyway, I asked him in the end of the conversation, like, am I being kicked off of the team, Ron? And he's like, yes, but the firm is requiring you to start another one so that you won't sue us. Um, that part was silent, but I understood it. Um, and the thing is, when people ask me, what do you do with your law degree nowadays? I mean, I think about, you know, the statute of limitations on how long some clothes can be left in the dryer at a laundromat. That's one thing, you know, interpreting parking signs every now and then, but also um, suing everybody I know. Just kidding. Um, but anyway, but am I? So anyway, so he kicks me off of the team. I have to start a new team. Obviously, that didn't go anywhere because people are like, we are definitely not playing basketball with you because during the season, what happened was I got the ball one and only one time. And honestly, I think we can all agree that that one and only one time was an error. I had this mistake ball that was at play, I suppose, in the game. And I'm standing there petrified, no idea what to do with this ball. So I then was like, oh, I know. And it occurred to me, I was like, I'm going to pass this ball to the referee. So that's the kind of lesbian I am and the kind of athlete I am. And this has been just so, so fun. Please donate. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Liz Glazer. You can find me on the internet. Send me an email. I'll never delete it. www.dearlizglazer.com is a good place to find me. Thank you again so much for having me. Good night, everybody. Happy gala. I hope you enjoyed her. She's just fantastic. <laughs> I'm so pleased that she could join us. Um, I think that we have a mayor in the house. I'm not sure, but I think he's here. I think he is among us. Uh, hello, I, I need to start my video uh, and the host won't let me. So I guess uh, I'll just start talking until they do that. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It's just like a law school class. Hi, everybody. I'm Quentin Lucas. Uh, I am pretty much the exact opposite of what you just heard because all I will talk to you about is sports. Um, you may know me for a few different things. First of all, I was at one point the uh, fifth best contracts professor at KU Law School. And uh, that was really a high point in my life. But uh, then I decided that I, I needed to get another government job because things are going great. And uh, I ran for mayor of beautiful Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, and that's why I got the flags all set up for you. So I'm supposed to be the more serious person, although Leah knows that's not the type of man I am. And in a certain, uh, in a few moments, we'll talk to Dean Mazza, but I'm so excited to see all of you. Uh, several of you have texted me about this event. All I wanna say is, donate lots and lots of money because here's my thing. And I raise money as a uh, political candidate sometimes. I actually donate to KU Law School because uh, they were kind enough to give me a job at one point. So I just figure that's at least worth 50 bucks a year. But uh, the thing that I wanna say to all of you is uh, donate a lot now or else Stephen Mazza will not only call you, but uh, he will come to your house. And uh, he's very good at it. He's been Dean so long. So a few things that I have to know. Today, we gather for the 26th annual Diversity in Law Banquet to celebrate diversity and raise funds for the Diversity in Law Scholarship at the University of Kansas. And real talk, I'll give you an odd vignette. Today at City Council, I was in a debate with someone and I said, I respect the hustle, which uh, many of you, right? Many of y'all may be black like me or others. That is a compliment. But I had a colleague who said, how dare you insult us like that? And I was like, respect the hustle actually means something totally different than you think. Um, believe it or not, I'll make this a whole law school class one day, but nevertheless, I think it's a sign of why we need different influences, different experiences, and more than anything, different people sometimes to make sure that we're kind of part of understanding what's going on in the law, um, not just here in Kansas and Missouri, but uh, more broadly around the world. Let me tell you more stuff that they wrote out for me. I'm kidding. I'm just being fun. The Diversity in Law Scholarship is used to attract qualified, diverse students to KU Law and to expand the legal opportunities and legal profession for students from all backgrounds. Like law school was a transformative experience for me. And the, the best part of this is, I'll tell you what, KU Law School is one of the best because not only did they write the stuff about KU Law School, but they wrote the stuff about my own law school experience. I foolishly did not go to the University of Kansas School of Law, but I wish I had because uh, I would have been able to write even more of this. Like, law school was a transformative experience for me, eh, but I didn't have Fred Lovett. Uh, that allowed me to grow and develop skills essential for the work I do today as a mayor. 
And I think you see that with our students each and every day. The opportunities provided to me were one of the many reasons I chose to run for city council and later, later mayor. Scholarship support can have a powerful impact for our students. In fact, scholarships are the reasons I was able to attend law school as a first generation law school student. And uh, to get you, I'm not gonna transition to the video quite yet. What I wanna say is this, um, and I'm being really serious about this. Um, every year at KU Law School, I get a chance to meet a lot of students. Some of you may be on, on the Zoom right now who wanna make a difference in their communities and wanna make a difference for their families and have seen the path of law as one of the most exciting ways that we can do it. I have loved my job and my affiliation with KU Law School because there's so many people who just care whether it's a first generation law student from Emporia, whether it's somebody who wants to change Kansas City, whether it's somebody who says, I wanna make a difference worldwide. We have KU law students who do that. I've taught them, I've interacted with them, I've talked to many of you alums. And that's why this diversity banquet is so important for us, but more than anything, why your support is so important. Because the money that you're giving now actually is making a difference for communities all around our country and all around our world. We have a video that's connected with that very mission. And so I will say to whoever is hitting the right button, take it away and we'll be back on the other side. Donors, thank you so much for generously donating to the Diversity Scholarship Fund. I was a recipient of the Diversity Scholarship, and now I'm an international trade lawyer in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Rock Chalk Jayhawk, go KU. Donors, thank you so much for your incredible generosity uh, donating to the Diversity Scholarship Fund. I'd always wanted to go to law school since high school, and one of the major impediments or concerns of mine was the financial burden law school would have on me, not only at that time, but moving forward. Because of the Diversity Scholarship Fund, um, I not only chose to attend KU for law school, but I was able to do so and focus on my classes instead of having another job at that time so that I did not have to worry as much about the financial strain that goes along with attending law school. The Diversity Fund was extremely helpful and I appreciate, number one, the law school for making that a priority, but number two, for, to all the donors, because that had a, a, a significant impact on not only my ability to attend law school and um, do so successfully, but also on my career. So I will forever be grateful and thankful to the donors in the law school, and I really uh, cannot emphasize how appreciative I am of the Diversity Scholarship Fund and you, the donor. Thank you. That was wonderful. I recognize that uh, Dean Mazza, who continues to be my boss, um, I, I didn't I give you enough time for introductions and all the other funds. So Dean Mazza, I have a little bit more, but take it away. Oh, gosh, um, I, I would hate to interrupt. I was going to introduce you, um, Mayor Lucas, but, you know, because you did not take either your undergrad or your grad degree from KU, I was just going to skip through, you know, all of the background. Um, I, I got to know, Quentin, do you remember, I think it was like 2010, we were at some picnic, um, and I said to you, you know, you, you, you had just finished your Eighth Circuit clerkship, and you were working for a firm, and I said, hey, have you ever thought about going into teaching? And you kind of gave me the cold shoulder. And then we, we met at the very same event the next summer. And by that point, you have given it some more thought. And you're like, yeah, I think I might want to do that. And then you became a VAP. And then you became a tenured, uh, tenured professor. And then you went into public service. And you gave all of that up to do what you're doing now. And as much as we hated to, to lose you, you know, you're, you're just doing a wonderful thing. We're lucky to have you in that position, particularly during this time. So thank you for everything that you're doing. And I also um, uh, want to thank all of the donors uh, this year. Gosh, we, uh, as of this afternoon, we were at about 46,775. Lee, does that sound right? Yes, it does. That is so much more than we have ever <laughs> raised over It is <laughs> Crazy, and, and, and Quentin is gonna convince everyone to get us at least up to 50. 
Well, I, I will okay. absolutely do that. I'm, I'm going to do, first of all, um, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Leah. Um, if you haven't gotten a chance to visit KU Law School lately, first of all, don't in person because it's still not quite the time, but um, make sure you visit us online. You see the stuff that's going on right now. I'm even teaching a class this semester on local government law. We have so many interesting clinics, so many dynamic opportunities. And one thing that I will say is our students are just so intriguing with what they're able to accomplish, what they're able to do, and your support is so vital to it. Uh, a few people in particular that I wanna thank tonight and some of our, our supporters who've already donat donated to tonight's fundraisers include Frank Bustamante, uh, my very good friend, Cal Carlin, I was at your daughter's wedding, so it's good to see you again. Uh, Judge Carlin, it's an honor to be with you as always. Nathaniel Davis, Amanda Angel, Meredith Schnook, Steve Friedman, making sure we do the best in admissions. Stan Williams, Peter Griffith, Heather Spielmaker, Megan Brackney, and Professor John Head. Um, we have a wonderful community of folks that not just students at KU Law School, but any of us who've stepped into the network, whether you were in Washington like Ahmad Rahman was in his remarks or anywhere else in the world or in our country, KU Law School has been so supportive along the way. And I was asked to share a little bit about why this matters so much. And I think it's this, there are so many of us who start law school. And I remember when I started law school, I was a kid who'd spent time in Hutchinson, Kansas and Kansas City. And so shout out to anybody in Reno County who's watching right now. And, um, I remember wondering, well, do I even belong in this profession? I don't have a father who works in it or a mother who works in it. And what I got to see was there was a place for me. And a big part of that was that there were other students who looked like me. Um, at the time I was in law school, we didn't really have many professors who looked like me, but I think we've done more and more in KU Law School, meet their faculty, meet their diverse influences and impacts and experiences. And that's the sort of work that we do. So I wanna say thank you to all of our donors. And I also wanna encourage you to give through the Launch KU webpage. You can go to launchku.org slash law diversity. That's launchku.org slash law diversity. I think maybe I've gone on too long, although I also have a 30 minute comedy set. So if you want me to do that, then uh, you can, but Stephen will be like, Q, you're done. You don't have to teach contracts anymore, do local government, get in and out. But more than anything, I encourage all of you to support. I continue to support the University of Kansas School of Law for all that they do for our entire region and our country. So with that, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Leah, for letting me be a part of this and rock chalk. Thank, thank you, Matthew. I wanted to do a comedy set also, but they told me I wasn't funny. We cut them off. It wasn't gonna happen. Oh, Leah, I forgot something. Can yes. I jump back in because maybe this is entertaining to people. Um, I will say this because I need to make sure I mention it. And I have met a few first year students at KU Law School. Um, I don't get to teach them the same way I did before, but I promise to offer all of them an internship. Now question, is that a valid contract? Mm. Oh my God. Anyway, uh, I know. No. Don't I make me do law. <laughs> You've got a tax guy on, but nevertheless, I did. I did want to. I did want to say, with 28 percent of our, our class of 2023 identifying self-identifying as students of color, the class at KU Law School this year is the most diverse in KU Law's history. And because we're hosting this year's event online, all proceeds are going directly to the students that you're supporting. It's going directly to scholarships. We're not doing overhead, uh, believe it or not. I did not just buy the flags last night, or else I would have gotten a Kansas flag too. Uh, but nevertheless, right, what we're actually doing is making sure we support students. So thank you to those of you who have donated so far. Launchku.org. That's all I've got. Leah, I promise I'm out. However, you're really, not out. <laughs> no, no, I know. I can never stop. Support KU Law School. I love you all. And uh, I love KU Law School as much as anything. It's where I, Stephen doesn't know this yet, but when they like vote me out of office and there's already been one recall, I'm coming right back. I can take four courses. I don't know what it will be but uh, we'll make sure we're looking out for everybody. So thank you guys. That sounds great. Or when you get elected president, I want to be treasury secretary. So. Deal. Okay. <laughs> One go. way or another. All right. Leah? We were making yeah. arrangements tonight. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. And I, I know your time is precious. Um, and we really appreciate you being here with us and cheering on our students and our efforts. Um, Obviously, we are all big fans of yours and seeing your success has just been fantastic for us as well. 
So I see that we are getting, I have a few more people to call out. I have Danielle Davey, Grant Harst, Uma Outka, and Sharon Brett who have given tonight. Thank you so much. I think Stan Williams and Johnny Thomas are also on our list. So thank you. Um, we are now going to encourage you to join our breakout rooms. So we're having these mini class reunion rooms uh, for the KU Law alums that are on the call. Hey, if you're not a KU Law alum and you want to join, I don't see what's wrong with that. Um, we'll keep the party going. So um, I'm going to, uh, I think you've all been provided the Zoom link, but it's it's a general Zoom link. We've just put it in the chat. Um, and once you get to the main Zoom room, you're going to be able to pick which breakout room you want to go to. And those breakout rooms are broken down by class year. Um, so you can choose the breakout room of your choice. We've got some faculty and students joining us in each one of those rooms as well. Thank you so much for attending tonight and for giving. We really appreciate your generosity um, and, your, and your shared compassion towards this project. Um, thank you. Dean Mazza? Yeah, I, I, I hope that I figured this out. Uh, but I do want to thank everyone, our gold, our silver, our bronze sponsors, uh, all of our supporters. Thanks again to NIC for uh, being the title sponsor for yet uh, another year. Uh, gosh, if we could get to that $50,000 figure, it would just be spectacular. So if you, uh, if you want to, if you haven't already and you want to donate this evening, please go to the launch uh, ku.edu. I'm, I'm sure I said that wrong, uh, but I think it's in the chat. Uh, and it will also remain open for the next week. So uh, if you get an email, don't be surprised because we will remind you again. All right, I'm a little scared about going to the chat room, but I think I can figure it out. All you have to do is click the link in the in the chat that you see um, the, for the breakout meetings. So go there and then you'll be able to choose your breakout room. Thank Thanks, you. Leah. Thanks, Leah. Okay. All right. See everybody. Okay. Thank you.